After four long years, the UIM Formula One H2O Series returns to the Far East in its 28-year history with the country of China as 20 drivers from 12 different nations get set to engage in a battle of supremacy on water at the second round of the 2023 World Championship at the Grand Prix of Zhengzhou, China. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Michael, along with my partner and race analyst, Jonathan Jones of Wales, and we greet you on the edge of a very historic Dragon Lake at the capital city of the Hunan province in the city of Zhengzhou and the country of China reopening itself after a long pandemic struggle and we are so happy to be here. Now we've had a chance to go around the countryside a bit and a few days ago it was fantastic as we had a chance to go with the local authorities with race teams and the drivers to see the Sholin Buddhist temple and the origins of Kung Fu, which was fantastic for everybody involved. And they actually, they had a chance to sample it themselves. Now, it was a fantastic afternoon, and it's great to be back here. Now, the BRM Watch's qualifying session yesterday afternoon in the battle for pole position turned into a truly dramatic Titanic one-hour chess match of skill and speed. And on this new race circuit, it was intoxicating indeed. Let's take a look and listen. Return to the province, and we bring you the BRM follow. The point is the weather changed really immediately. The bats off, launch it, here we go. This We've seen this so many times in the last day or so. He flies the boat up, he stuffs it into the water very, very hard. Jonas Anderson surpasses his face. It's getting away from the west, heading more now toward the south. Tommy Celio by two tenths of a second. Checkered flag has come out. To the top, Jonathan. Sean Torrente with a 45. It now. Jonas Anderson is officially given the pole position with a 45 7 8. Congratulations to the Swede. Peter Moran moves up into the second. Well, it's really dramatic the last few moments in that Q3 session as three different drivers took number one. Finally, it went to Jonas Anderson. Now, this race circuit, the drivers will be running on this afternoon is just under two kilometers in length. And Jonathan, why don't you take us around it? It's really tricky, especially on the inside portion of it. Yeah, we've got a mixture of really tight sections, and then we've got that long, long back straight. So uh, you can down past the start line in from number one into number two, tight turn, 90 degrees into number three. Then that, we were talking about that long straight. Yesterday, the wind was so strong here. All the way down there, 750 meters, going into number four, pulling about five and a half Gs as you throttle into number five, floating the boat. By that, I mean keeping it on top of the water. Don't let it drag on the water to get maximum speed. That comes through six and down past the start finish line. All right, wind was a huge factor yesterday afternoon, and right now the winds are dying down a bit. It was less than uh, 10 kilometers an hour, which is fantastic. We'll see how it plays out. Now, 20 drivers from 12 different nations from four different continents will line up this afternoon chasing fame and glory. Let's take a look at how they'll start off the grid. Jonas Anderson on the pole, his ninth career pole position. Set a dazzling time, and just behind him is Peter Moran, the CTIC China driver, three-tenths of a second back. Two-time world champion Sami Selio starting third. In the fourth spot is three-time world champion uh, Sean Torrente from Team Abu Dhabi, a second back. And then Alberto Camparato in the top five. Good run for the Italian. Grant Trask coming back to racing, had a spectacular day. He'll start sixth. And then Rashid Al-Quimsi, expect big things out of this young driver. Philip Roms had a good morning session, was one of the fastest drivers out there. Brett Dillard from the USA, he is another rookie, looking stronger by the moment. Bartek Marzawak, he leads this championship after a win in Indonesia, will start 10th. Then Ferdinand Zanderberg and Eric Stark struggling a bit yesterday with battery issues. Marit Stromoy starting 13th. Duarte Benevente, the senior member of this circuit, starting in the 14th spot. Then Brock Cohen, a rookie. Cedric Deguin and Andrea Bourgeau, the two drivers for the Maverick team. Then Ben Jelf and Kali Vipo with an engine change. And Ahmed Al-Fahim will not start today's. So now we have a chance to come back and find out exactly the thoughts of the man who will be on the pole for the ninth time of his career. Jonas Anderson, the 2021 world champion. Let's hear about his battle yesterday with the conditions. 
Yesterday was a very tricky qualifying. It was uh, very rough and uh, the wind was changing the whole time. We have been working really hard this weekend to repair. The boat was broken after Indonesia, so we have been uh, having Molgar here to help me fix the boat. And we have been spending many time with that. But yesterday everything was working and uh, we took the pool position and uh, really happy for that and all the big work the boys did and uh, feel very strong for the race today. Be interesting to see how he plays out. He finished uh, eighth in the overall first uh, race in Indonesia with problems. Can he get it home today? We'll have to wait and see, but he's on the pole. Let's hear from the man who thought he was on the pole, the driver from Florida, Team Abu Dhabi, three-time world champion. And for the second time in two races in 2023, the officials determined that they countermanded his fast lap and he will start in that fourth spot. Second race in a row, I thought I had pole, and then I didn't. Um, I had pole time-wise, I had pole on the lap, and then I wanted to make one more lap before the end of the session because the water was good, so I timed it perfect. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't told that there was a boat inside of me, so they gave me a penalty for dangerous driving because I took his line, which I did. Um, and thankfully, we didn't get to an accident or anything, but it was just a mistake. It wasn't intentional, um, but it cost us the pole. So it is what it is. We're going to start fourth today. All right, we'll see how he does. And all eyes on Peter Moran, the local CTIC China driver. Let's hear from him. He's starting second. First of all, we are, of course, really happy for the result yesterday, qualifying second. Now, today, the job is to save our second position and try to make something for the first position. So we'll see what's happened. We feel like good right now, so... Let's uh, take care and uh, find a good solution for the prop between uh, same thing, acceleration and speed. All right, we'll see how he does this afternoon. This is the first time in four years that we've returned to China. Last race here was a pair of back-to-back -back races and Shaw Men and Alex Corella winning and Sean Torrente is the defending champion here. That was back, as we mentioned, in 2019. So Zhengzhou is the 11th different city that we've raced at in the 28-year history of the sport here. We will go 38 laps around this afternoon, 38 tours, as we will hold our breath, and we're getting very, very close to the start of this race. Great crowds on hand today. The, the packed grandstands behind us here, and uh, everybody is enjoying the afternoon. It's a lovely sunny day, light winds. The 30-second board now coming up. As we hold our breath, all eyes glued on the official starter. We've had six different winners in the last six races. Anybody could be a hero this afternoon. Seven different race winners in the last 23 Grand Prix. So as the 30-second board comes down, we wait for the lights to come on. We'll look for all three rows to come on, and when they go off, we'll go racing. The first row of lights are on. The second row of lights, seconds away. Third row of lights are on. We hold our breath, and they're underway, and they explode away from the dock. And 10,000 horsepower comes roaring at you as they head down toward the commitment buoy as they move their way through, and they will head down off to the southwest side of this race course. Now through the commitment buoy, side by side, the battle with Jonas Anderson, and pushing him very hard was Peter Moran, the driver from China, as they come one, two, and one, two, three, four, as they head off down toward the front straightaway, past the paddock area. Torrente is doing his best to try to move up, as is his teammate. As you can see, the driver from Abu Dhabi pushing as hard as he can. And Rashid Al Quimsi doing what he can. But look at the fight right now going on up in the front, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely blinding start there by Jonas Anderson. But you could see that Peter Moran, he was in that second slot. He was closing down on him. Definitely had more speed than him. But he had to keep that line into turn number one, turn number two giving Jonas just that edge. He had a bit more acceleration, not quite so much top speed. Managed to just get ahead of him, and he's holding that strong lead of the Grand Prix at the moment. All right, Jonas Anderson out of the first place. Now he goes sliding through turn number six. Sean Torrente has moved up into that second place position. Peter Rand down in the third. As you can see, our leader now come whistling by the start-finish line around the right-hander here. The drivers say that commitment into the right-hander is not too strong. They can slide through it. Really, the problem's on this race course today, as Jonathan mentioned, is coming toward us right here as they head into turn number two. And now this down this long, long straightaway, 750 meters, and Jonas Anderson has turned it up the wick, and he's got about a 15-boat-length lead 
on Sean Torrente, who started in the fourth spot and charged his way up into second with Peter Moran in third. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be long before Torrente was going to make his move. He knew he had to get there early on. He had a great start in that fourth, and obviously that's given Jonas a bit of a breathing space because had Torrente got that pole position, it would have been a tough order for anybody to have actually overtaken him. But Jonas at the moment, clear water. He's going to have that now for the next five or six laps before they get to back markers. And as you can see, that boat has got so much acceleration, it is flying. But Torrente in that second slot now, Steve, slowly but surely closing down on the lead boat of Jonas Anderson. Jonas Anderson now slowly working his way into a position where he's going to try to start catching up some, some back markers. He's not there at that point, but he is on the fly in the back straightaway, as we talked about. There's the man in second place, your three-time world champion, Sean Torrente. Torrente, the defending race winner here. Again, as we mentioned, it's four years since we've been back here. This is the 11th place, the stop on the tour in China. This is the first time we have come here to Zhengzhou, and we're having a great time in this modern city. As you look at Eric Stark, Eric Stark disappointed yesterday. He had a loose battery, and uh, Eric Stark found himself in a situation where he normally is up in the top five, and uh, he started way down in the 12th position, so... For Eric Stark, he is doing his best to charge his way up in the points. He's third in the championship, Jonathan. Yeah, but as we speak, it looks to me, Steve, like Jonas Anderson has certainly got the legs on all of these other boats out here. As I said, for the first lap or two, he seemed to be, they all seem to be even Stevens. But as, as the race has progressed, Jonas, he is just building up an enormous lead. The boat that it's... Funny enough, I watched him in practice yesterday and uh, the free practice the day before, and it took him a long time to get the boat dialed in to this quite technical circuit. But he certainly did, and you could see him coming to the fore in free practice this morning. He said, we now know exactly what propellers we need, how to set the engine up, how to balance the boat in these tricky conditions. And at the moment, Steve, he seems to have everything going his way. Eric Stark is on the fly. The young uh, Swedish driver back with the victory team. They have returned for the first time in four years. A team out of Dubai, and he is flying on the race course right now. Remember, a few years ago, he had a chance to... Uh, win the title in the very last event at Sharjah, and it did not happen for him. As uh, you can see that Bartek Marzawak's wife is pointing the official Louis Riberio, who's the race commissioner, about something as we watch Eric Stark continue to fly. Oh, no, Bartek's out of the race. Oh, my. He is the race leader. He was in Indonesia. He's the points championship leader with 20 points after winning from the pole just eight weeks ago. He struggled all weekend, Jonathan, and he has come to a stop. Now, the question is, is he in harm's way? We can't see the full race course from our vantage point. We're trying to figure out exactly where he is, but uh, if he's out of harm's way, the race will continue. If he is impeding the progress of other drivers, Jonathan, they'll immediately put out the yellow flag. Yeah, he's off the race line, Steve, so no problem there. He obviously, the engine or whatever went wrong, didn't, he, he could feel that things weren't going right, and rather than the boat stopping right in the circuit, he pulled off the circuit, which has allowed the rest of the race to, to continue. But there we got Jonas Anderson just picking up him in shot now, going through the back markers. My goodness, has he got some pace out there this afternoon. Jonas normally at the front of the field, but we do not see him being able to dominate as he is doing here this afternoon in China. The boat is perfectly balanced, we can see that. The conditions are a lot better today. We went back to yesterday, Steve, it was blowing so hard out there, and all of these drivers were having, finding life very, very difficult. But in these calm waters, that short boat that he designs himself, uh, it's based, I believe, on a DSC boat built up in Como in Italy. And what he's done is he's built a lot of his own ideas into that boat. He does, a lot of, he does a lot of the tuning of the engines himself and everything. And it looks to me at the moment, Steve, as he sighs through the back markers, that he is having everything going his way. The nice thing as well about this circuit is the fact that there's plenty of room here. Normally, we're on these very tight circuits. It's difficult to overtake some of the back markers. They do get in the way from time to time. But here, it's such an open circuit that he can build up that lead now from uh, Sean Torrente in second slot. As they work their way and whistle around the race course, as you can see, uh, Jonas Anderson, Anderson, of course, uh, looking to avenge his eighth-place finish in that opening round in Indonesia. 
as a driver from Fruvi, Sweden, is doing his best to put some magic together. Jonas Anderson, who has a total of, uh, as you look, 10 career victories. He's been on the podium 27 times out of 109 starts. And uh, he wants to catch up to the championship points leader. What a break for the rest of the field as uh, Bartek Marzouak dropped out of the race early here. And he will not get any points today. So again, only in round number two, a lot of things being scrambled about. But uh, good move for uh, Jonas Anderson. And uh, at the same time, uh, we take a look and see Sean Torrente trying to fight through. Oh, we got a problem. Oh, no, we've lost the Chinese driver. Peter Morata, he slows down. He's on the outside of the race course. You can see him as we go inside as the driver from Rouen, France, has pulled off after qualifying his career best second yesterday. And all eyes in China were on this driver, Peter Morin. And now he comes into the paddock, Jonathan. He's on the dock. We've yeah, that's problems. a shame because yesterday, Brent Dillard, he had a technical problem with the engine and... Uh, I don't quite know what happened there as we see Philippe Chiap not looking very happy that uh, his driver there, the French driver, his, uh, his ex-son-in-law actually, um, is uh, being pulled up along onto the pontoon. They're checking out to see if there's anything they can see, anything they can do to get that boat back out on the water, but it looks like his day is done. Jonas Anderson out on a cruise. Looks like he's just working his way slowly around the back markers. And Really, traffic hasn't been a problem. He's about 25 boat lengths in front of Sean Torrente, who in return is uh, making it easy as he's trying to pull away from Sami Celio, who's in that third place position. Fourth place position right there is uh, Rashid Al Quimsy. He's come charging up from seven. Uh, we've lost another driver, the rookie. What a shame for the driver, Ben Jelf, the youngest driver on the tour for the Atlantic team. And uh, he has stopped right along the dock along with Peter Morass. So two more boats have dropped out of this race early, Jonathan. Yeah, it, seemed, uh, it seems though that uh, the Chinese team, they've still got one of their boats running as we go back now to, uh, to the lead boat of Jonas there. The gap at the moment, Steve, seems to be opening. He's getting through those back markers a lot better. Maybe the timing is slightly playing to a, into his advantage. He's taken some of them on that long back straight, so they haven't been able to get in the way. And Sean Torrente in that second place, try as he might, just cannot seem to close down on the on the lead boat of uh, of Anderson. Let's see if Peter. Let's see if Peter Moran can get back going out. They're uh, trying to restart the engine. He's trying to slowly get back into place. But Steve, let's be honest, he's lost too much time, so he might as well call it a day. Oh, yeah. I'm sure for his sponsors, maybe it's a good thing that he's going to be out there because obviously he's the leader in the team, uh, in the team China team, as it were. Um, and maybe he can get back out there and fly the flag. And, and you never know, there could be a few yellows uh, if there are any incidents out there. And he should be able to then work his way up the field as we go back to Torrente in the Abu Dhabi boat there. Qualified fourth yesterday because of that incident. He explained it just before the event and uh, running a very, very strong second. Yeah, he's running very strongly. And it's been crazy the way his season has started. You know, you come in as a defending uh, world champion and defending race here in China. In Indonesia, he thought he had the pole, but the, uh, they docked him for not going around the uh, correct uh, buoy as he was working his way around the circuit. So he took away his fast time, which he thought he had pole, and then he jump-started in the race by a fraction of a second. When he thought he had won the race because he outdueled Bartek Marzouak in the last lap to take the lead, but he ended up finishing ninth. They docked him a lap, and then yesterday, he thought he had pole again, but uh, at the very last second, he came through a right-hander, and Sami Selio was right there, and the officials uh, declared, after looking at the video evidence, that he had impeded Sami Selio, so they took his fast lap away. So Torrente, who started in fourth, there's his teammate now, Rashid El Quimsy, the three-time world champion at F3, and there is a 10-time world champion, Guido Capelli, who's the team manager of this very successful Team Abu Dhabi race. By the way, it was... Uh, Capolini, who won the opening race 
ever here in China 28 years ago in 1995. So a bit of history for him as it is for you. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, when you consider the experience that that team has got, because I mean, I remember racing against Cappellini in the early 80s. So, and the crew that he's got with him, all the engineers and the mechanics, uh, the boat builders as well, um, they've been with him from day one. So a wealth of experience in that team there in setting up the boat and getting the best performance that they can for their two drivers, Sean Torrenti and, uh, and Rashid, that are out there. But as we speak, Steve, that gap is actually getting bigger and bigger with Jonas Anderson. Is he now, Steve, going to start tapping off a little bit, not putting too much pressure on the equipment so that he, he can actually finish this event as we pick up Sammy Selio, Steve, still running in third slot? Yeah, Sammy Selio, and he has more pole positions in China than any other driver in history. He set a record of doing five pole position number ones back in uh, 09. And uh, I'll tell you what, he was dominating. And, but Sami Salio's in a bit of a funk. He's been trying to uh, come up with some more wins. He hasn't won in six years, Jonathan. He's got one win at nine. How can you believe that for Sami Salio, man, who in his career has been such a dominating performer. And uh, he's in a good position right now to get on the podium. And he may lead this championship when the afternoon's over. You're dead right, Steve. Maybe he's thinking, well, yes, it's important to win the race. But to win the championship, it's all about points. It's all about being consistent and being right up there at the sharp end. So third position for Sammy. Yes, I'm sure he'd like to be further up the field, but that's a good, solid finish if he can maintain that. The problem we've had in the past, Steve, is that poor Sammy, he's, he's been devastatingly fast, but they've had one or two little technical issues uh, with, with the boat, and that's sort of... That slowed down his progress as uh, we pick up one of the Gilman Mad Croc team uh, drivers there. They are running really strong in this event and uh, putting on a fantastic show. Yeah, you're looking at the uh, young Australian driver who has uh, jump-started his career. He has come back, Grant Trask. And Grant Trask is in his 16th start, the first one this year. He didn't start the year as uh, it was uh, Alec Vekstrom from Finland who was Rookie of the Year last year. He dropped out of the event, but it looks like there's a problem with Grant Trask. Oh, no, what a shame for Scott Gilman. He was so fast this morning, as, as was his teammate, Philip Roms, for a long time, the Finnish driver with this Mad Croc Gilman team. And... Uh, what a shame because oh, uh, Grant dear. Trask, remember, yesterday had a bit of an uh, accident in that qualifying yesterday. and uh, Quite a bit of an accident, Steve. In fact, the boat actually sunk uh, after the incident. So obviously, all of the uh, electrical system, the engine, and everything else got went under the water. And they worked right through the night to get everything back together. And fortunately, although it was a horrendous accident, there was no damage on the boat. Um, but, you know, water can work its way into the system, into the engine, into the electrics. And is that what the problem that we seem to see he has out there this afternoon? And is it his day? But uh, going back there to the number two Abu Dhabi boat, Rashid, doing a great job. Uh, this weekend, Steve, he's, uh, he's actually competing for... Um, for his, uh, his teammate, uh, his cousin. cousin, cousin, that's what I was looking for, uh, who's uh, unable to uh, attend this event. And, you know, bearing in mind that he's not sat in a Formula One boat for quite some time, doing a great job as we go back to Sean Torrente, still hanging on in there in that select second slot. Sean Torrente as he slides himself down through. Oh, yes, for the American from Florida, this is the 63rd start. He's got 11 victories. He's got 10 pole positions, and he's got 29 podiums. And he is winning one out of every six race starts that he starts, Jonathan. That's the best in all the lineup. Only Eric Stark, one out of seven, is just behind him. And uh, so if you're putting a, if you're a betting man, it's good to put money down on Sean Torrente for a win. Yeah, as we pick up Eric Stark, the victory team, another team run out to the Middle East. Um, they run actually out to Dubai. They used to be very strong in offshore racing but uh, they seem to have moved into uh, circuit racing now, and uh, Stark is the man to do the job, and they've, uh, they've got a long-term contract with him, and uh, slowly but surely, they're really getting every, their act together, and he's slowly moving right up to the front of the field. I'll tell you who's doing well this afternoon and punching a ticket is uh, uh, Brett Dillard, the uh, American driver for the CTI Sessions in China team. He's uh, fighting his way up, and... Uh, Sami Selio, we believe, back in third. 
And um, the bottom line here for really what's going on, uh, bear with us here, we're, we're actually flying on one wing here because uh, we have no scoring whatsoever. So we're doing it visually. So uh, bear with us here. We have no idea how many laps are done. And we're doing this visually picking out who we believe is up in the top five. So bear with us. Between Jonathan and I, we've been doing this for about 40 years, so we're figuring it out. But uh, we can't see all the race circuits, so we're, we're juking and jiving our way through this right now. But, yeah, uh, I think we've established who the leader is, who's in second. Sammy's in third, fourth position at the moment, Steve. I've just seen Sami Selya going through. I'm guessing that it's uh, Rashid, the second Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi driver that's in fourth. And then the Mad Croc uh, driver, he's in uh, fifth position. Yeah, that looks as though he's fifth and, and pushing pretty hard. There's not a lot of difference in time between fourth, fifth and sixth as we speak. Yeah, and I would give Eric Stark in the sixth spot. And then it uh, looks like Ferdinand Zanderbergen could be in the seventh position. So again, this is totally unofficial because we're watching the boats go around with any kind of electronic help this afternoon, so bear with us here. So as we take a look, there you can see the youngster as he is uh, getting a chance to race. That's Rashid al -Quims. He's 31 years old. He's from Abu Dhabi. This is his eighth race start. And uh, finally, yes, they must. the gods must have heard us because <laughs> poof, all of a sudden we got everything back. Now we can get uh, a little bit more precise. Let's start off, Jonathan, as we watch uh, Hamid al uh, as he comes through. Let's, uh, Rashid, I should say, Al-Quimsy. Let's find out exactly how we did. We got Jonas Anderson in first. That's right, Sean Trenti second, right? Sami Celio, yes. Rashid Al-Quimsy fourth, we were right. Philip Rams fifth, right? Alberto Camparado, I didn't see him. He's in the sixth spot, and then Eric Stark seventh, and then Ferdinand Zanderberg. So we only missed one out of the top eight. That's pretty good. Yeah, just to give you guys uh, that are watching in this afternoon, Jonas at the moment is 12 seconds ahead of Sean Torrente. I mean, that is a country mile. That shows the pace that uh, the Swede is running here. My goodness, we don't often see a gap between first and second, something like that. And then Sami Selyu in third. Looks like they've almost lapped the third position boat. If that's the, uh, if that's what we can work on here on, on the times. They but are as you flying. Said, yeah, Rashid then. Philip Rome's doing a great job out there, Steve, isn't he? Uh, with the uh, with the Gilman team, with the doing a fantastic job. Ferdinand Zanbergen hanging on in eighth. Marit down to ninth. She's moved up a little bit in that field. Brent Dillard down eleventh. Brock Cohen in twelfth and Duarte Benevente from Portugal in that 13 slot. Okay, 20 laps gone in this, so we are past the halfway point of this 38 lap quest this afternoon. Round number two of the UIM Formula One World Championship for power boating here at the Grand Prix of Zhengzhou, China. First time we've come back to China since uh, 2019, four years ago. And there you see Philip Roms. He was the youngest driver ever, Jonathan, in the history of Formula One to start a race at the age of 18. And it's hard to believe that he has been in a race boat for 10 seasons already. And uh, he's only 29 years old. Yeah, but Steve, he's up in that fifth slot at the moment. And I've got to say, running very, very strong. So where has he been in the past? How well has he done? Is this probably one of his best finishes? I think it must be. Um, since he's moved into that uh, Mad Croc Gilman team, he really seems to be getting everything together. They started off with a few niggly problems uh, in, uh, in the first event that we had in Indonesia earlier this year, but it seems as though he's getting everything together. And all of a sudden, Steve, it looks like the Eric Stark, Eric Stark yeah. on the inside Victory pushing team. hard. Is he going to be able to overtake Roms? Roms taking on the inside, Stark on the outside. There is a ding-dong battle coming up here now for that uh, fourth and fifth position. Well, as we watch them go through, we wonder what happened to Alberto Camparado because he was right up in the mix with him. He was right behind Philip Roms, but here comes Stark nipping at the heels of the finish driver, and he is hungry for bait. He wants to continue on. He's got superior speed. He's starting to pick the pace up, Jonathan. He's getting into a rhythm. He's really getting faster and faster. As you take a look at Brett Dillard, the driver from South Carolina, the rookie who's down in the 11th position. He's trying to pop back up into the top 10. He qualified eighth. There's a good boat battle right now, as you can see him coming through. Here's Stark splitting the middle, trying to go by him. And it looks like Eric Stark is doing his best. 
to move up and get around the driver from Finland, Philip Roms, and now he's chasing Rashid Al Quimsy for the fourth position. Fantastic driving there from the uh, the Finnish driver Roms. Stark on the outside again, trying another line. He's got that long back straight. Has he got more speed? Is he going to be able to take him down the back straight? 750 meters. They're now there. Roms on the inside. Stark on the outside. Stark slowly but surely closing down on him, Steve. Roms got the inside line. He should benefit from that. He should be able to get through the next few turns. As Stark tries to make a move on the outside. A few back markers between the two of them. Stark floating it out there. Roms on the inside. It's nip and tuck. All right, as we watch Stark doing his best, trying to stay out of the wash. As Jonathan mentions, he's got a longer way around, a bigger real estate package in front of him. And now he's got Rashid Al Quimsy. So we got a bit of a three boat battle going on for that fourth position. Stark getting very aggressive. Here comes the driver. We call him uh, fondly the Swedish meatball. He's doing his best to make an impression. He wants to get back up into the top five. He finished third in the opening round in Indonesia. He's chasing points, and boy, is he on the fly, Jonathan. He's absolutely flying out there. Look at the pace of that uh, victory boat. But at the moment, the problem the drums has got is that Rashid is a little bit slower than him, so he's obviously impeding his progress uh, around the circuit, and that means then that Eric is being able to close down. He only needs to make one mistake. Roms again there. You can see the wash everywhere. He probably can't see where he's going. Rashid switches to the inside. Roms on the outside. Is he going to be able to overtake him? Stark now trying to figure out the formula to success as he comes up closer and closer. Three, four boats in the middle of the action as they work their way around back markers. 27 laps gone. We've got just 11 left in the books. Let's see what happens here as Philip Roms desperately trying to hold off Eric Stark. Now remember, Philip Roms was the driver back in uh, Evian a few years ago that held off Sean Torrente to get on the podium to finish second. He held the three-time world champion at bay, and he's trying to do the same thing with Eric Stark. I tell you what, that last lap, the way the Roms came through, number five, number six, round the right-hander, which was really difficult. Rashid took a tight line, Roms took the outside line there, kept the boat floating on top of the water. He overtook Rashid, and now now he's got a bit of breathing space. He's got some clear water ahead of him, so he should be able to slowly but surely improve on that gap between himself and Eric Stark, who's in the uh, just behind him there, Steve. As we watch this tremendous tussle back here on the far side of the race course, Jonas Anderson, our leader from Sweden, continues to pile up the speed. He's over 15 seconds ahead of Sean Torrente, and that's saying something for the fleet-minded Floridian who knows how to put the max down on the water on any kind of race boat and Roms though as we uh, see what happens uh, unofficially our uh, scorecard here is, it's changing a bit we got 10 laps left to go and it shows that uh, Roms may have dropped back into the 11th spot but we're watching Eric Stark now Stark's up into the fourth position and um, the only thing I can't understand is if, if Roms was down a lap, why was he trying so hard to stay ahead of, uh, of Stark if Stark was up in fourth? So we'll have to wait until we get a maybe an update on the positions uh, uh, as this race progresses. 28 laps of 38 of a 38 Grand, lap Grand Prix so far, and Roms there, by goodness, I've not seen this drive this guy driving so well in a, such a long time, Steve. He really is in the groove out there this afternoon. As we watch the boats come through, there's Marit Strumoy. Strumoy from Norway, and she is having a great day so far. And she's up into the top five with uh, Marit Strumoy. It's her 93rd start. She's got one victory. Sharja back in 2015. She's got a pole. And here in China, this is her 18th run. She's got one podium and 18 starts. And there you can see unofficially uh, the uh, situation with Xander Bergen. Uh, listed in the top three, right now we're going to kind of go with our, our eyes observation and rather than the scoring, which just keeps coming in and out. So uh, we're, uh, we're going to use the old technique, Jonathan. So uh, we were pretty spot on without having any kind of scoring earlier on. So yeah. less than nine laps to be run here. And round number two of the championship. Don't forget to join us because we will be heading off to France in the next round. Round number three at Macon. That'll take place in the last day or two of the June, and it'll carry over to the first and second of July. Lovely Macon, France. We can't wait to go there, and it's going to be a fantastic show. Very skinny course, 
Kind of like uh, what we had in Chalon Sassol many years ago, down and back, you can't hide, and it should be a lot of fun, a lot of traffic, and uh, it's gonna be a real challenge. Yeah, it's some really tight racing there. As you say, we've got these long, long straights, so very different to what we've got here. And what we had in Indonesia, the Grand Prix that we had before here, we raced there on Lake Toba, um, north of Jakarta, and my goodness, they put on a hell of a show out there to put their first Formula One Powerboat Grand Prix on, and it looks like we're gonna be going back there for the next four to five years, so, uh, you know, Indonesia is firmly now on the map of Formula One powerboat racing. Great back, great to be back here in China. And the event so far, everything about it has been absolutely perfect. The circuit, the organization, and uh, let's hope, fingers crossed, that we're going to be coming back to this event uh, for a long time to come in the future. Eight laps to go, less than eight laps now, and Sean Torrente has carved a little bit of meat off the turkey. He's down about 13 seconds. It was over 15 and a half a while ago as we continue to watch the driver from Sweden, Eric Stark, who's made his uh, return. He won in China back in 2017. He is one of about uh, six different drivers who have won races here. Now, as we talked about, Jonathan, in the last six races, six different winners. That's incredible. It goes back to a year ago, and uh, anything can happen here this afternoon. That's right. And what's nice about Formula One powerboat racing is you have no idea who's going to be winning the race. It's so evenly matched between the top, say, eight to ten boats. You know, and as you say, so many different winners in the last seven races, which is, which is great, and that's what makes it so exciting. We're back there to start. He certainly hasn't given up, Steve. You can see just ahead of him there the, uh, the Mad Croc driver Driver Philip Roms doing a great job out there. I have not seen this guy drive so well for many, many a year, and uh, he seems to have slotted really well into that Mad Croc Gilman team. Um, very happy this morning. He qualified, I think, uh, this morning he was running out there in second or third position in free practice, and he said, at last, I've got everything dialed in. We've got the right combination of propeller, boat, engine, and he said, it, it, it just gives me the confidence to do well in the race, and it's certainly showing out there at the moment where he's lying in that third slot. You know, Sanderson continues to charge his way around the traffic like there's no traffic at all as he is pushing so hard and uh, doing his best right now to continue to pull away from the rest of the field. Right now he's about 14 seconds behind. Uh, Torrente's about 14 seconds back of Jonas Anderson. Those two drivers a year ago at the end of the season in Sharjah pushed and tussled. They both had uh, very close uh, points to each other. Torrente came in the final race, a three-point margin, and all uh, Jonas had to do is to charge up and uh, win the race at the end after Torrente dropped out of the event. And surprise, surprise, Jonas Anderson leaned that engine out and charged a bit too much. The engine failed him with 10 laps to go. And Sean Torrente, who was wet and depressed in the paddock, ended up winning his third world title. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. And let's give a shout for Marit Stromoy. Fifth position at the moment, closing down really fast. She started way down the field. And she's only a couple of seconds now away from Eric Stark in that fourth slot. So she really has put the hammer down. Yesterday in qualifying, the winds were blowing and she said she just could not get the setup right on the boat. So therefore, she had to start down in something like 10th or 12th position for the actual start of this event, which makes it so difficult when they're so evenly matched. But she's sighed the way through the traffic and is right up there in fifth at the moment. Take a look at Zatterberger. We've been showing him for a while and we'll see what exactly what he's done. He won in San Nazaro and uh, just missed out on Rookie of the Year a year ago. This is his 10th start. He's got one pole. He's had three top sixes. This is his first time ever in China. And he is such a great addition to this Sami Celio team. It looks like, according to our scoring, now I haven't noticed, uh, Celio has drifted downward. And uh, so they're good. the team is at the moment represented by Ferdinand Zanderberg. And so unofficially here with less than three laps to go, Jonas Anderson, number one, Sean Torrente, two. Ferdinand Zanderberg and now being shown in third. Eric Stark trying to close up in fourth. Reed Stromoy in the top five for the first time this year. Rashid El Quimsy in the sixth spot. Alberto Camparato in a fine seventh position. Kali Vipo looking for more points. He's in the eighth position. Brett Dillard now has come back up and he is in the top ten. And he is looking for points for his second straight race in a row and that battle for Rookie of the Year award and Philip Roms in the tenth spot. 
Yeah, and back there to Jonas Anderson leading this Grand Prix now. 16.61 seconds ahead of Sean Torrente in second position. He's probably now thinking, OK, we're really getting near the end. Let's back off a little bit. Drop the engine revs by about sort of a thousand. Not push it too hard because in the end you've got to finish to win this race. And you can see that that boat is, is driving it beautifully on top of the water. But it looks like the speed is down just that little bit, Steve, because he needs the reliability to finish the event. All right, Jonathan. Last lap here, the final lap of the event. Jonas Anderson can almost cruise home. He's got a lead of about 15 seconds on Sean Torrente. Jonas Anderson has led this race start to finish, and he is coming by with just a half a lap to go as he works his way down this long back straightaway on a lovely sunny day here in Zhengzhou, China, in front of a capacity crowd who's having a great time seeing Formula One for the very first time. So with Jonas Anderson, who finished the first race of the year in that eighth position, Coming out of two turns, working his way down through turn number five, down to turn number six. He could almost coast home, and Jonas Anderson from Sweden will come across and take the checkered flag. So the veteran 2021 world champion wins his first race of 2023 and moves himself up the championship ladder looking for Sean Torrente, who comes barreling home in second place after the Americans started down in fourth spot, moved himself up two places in the very first lap and chased Jonas Anderson all the way to the line. And uh, it's going to be a tremendous battle for the world championship this year as we've now traded wins in the first two races here. Unofficially, Ferdinand Zanderbergen will finish third, Eric Stark fourth, Reed Stromoy in the fifth spot, Rashid Alquimze, the uh, driver who came in to fill in for his cousin Thani Alquimze in Team Abu Dhabi in the sixth spot, Alberto Camparato in the seventh, Kali Vipo from Finland eighth, Brett Diller, the uh, South Carolina driver in the ninth position for CTIC China, giving them some points today after Peter Moran dropped out. And then Philip Roms from Finland coming home in the tenth and final place, and that is truly unofficial. But there you have it. The race was run in 32 minutes, a pretty fast event. We had no stoppages. Bartek Marzawak pulled off out of harm's way, did the right thing. Once he realized he had a problem, he pulled off the race circuit, didn't stop it. And uh, for him, hey, tough break for him. He was on the fly, Jonathan. He had finished in his last three races, Bartek Marzawak, third in Sharjah, second in Sharjah, first in Indonesia, not today. So here are the uh, unofficial results. Anderson picks up uh, 20 big points, wins by over 16 seconds on Sean Torrente. Xander Bergen finishing uh, third. Eric Stark come charging up from 12th to finish fourth. Marie Stromai, she's pushed her way up into the fifth position. Rashid Al Quimsey started seventh, finished sixth. And Alberto Camparana finished in the seventh spot. Kali Vipo in the eighth position. Brett Dillard uh, started ninth, or started eighth, finished ninth, and then uh, Philip Roms tenth. The rookie Cohen from Australia still chasing some points. He just missed the points today. Dwight Benevent finishing in the twelfth spot, and uh, the Maverick Racing team of uh, De Guin and Bourgeau were thirteenth and fourteenth. Sami Celio dropping out. Uh, what a shame for him. He thought maybe he could pick up some points today. Uh, Trask, and then uh, there you go, Grant Trask coming uh, home, and after uh, doing well early, he ended up dropping out. So Jonas Anderson, a familiar position, and for the driver from Sweden, he now is tied Sean Torrente with 11 victories. He has had 110 starts, and he picks up his 11th uh, win of his career. Sean Torrente finished today his 63rd start. He has 11. Yeah, great, great result for Jonas, isn't it? I mean, like I said earlier on, I mean, it took him a long time to get that boat balanced in and pick, choose the right propeller to get that performance at the front of the field. And uh, uh, a big shout out for um, for the boat builders that have been working on his boat for the last couple of three days to make sure that, uh, you know, it was in good condition for the event. And uh, obviously, blimey O'Reilly, that is one heck of a gap though, Steve, between Sean Torrente, who's normally right up there at the sharp end fighting for the lead. Jonas, 16.72 seconds behind Sean. For Ferdinand uh, Zandberg, and I mean, great result for him in third. Uh, we didn't really get a lot of exposure uh, of Zandenberg to, to be able 
to talk about uh, during the event itself. But that's a solid performance from the young, uh, from that young um, uh, Charger driver and uh, Eric Stark fighting right the way through to get that full slot. Yeah, and as we take a look at the consistent Maverick team drivers coming back in, and uh, we had some highs and some lows today. And when this is all said and done, uh, Sami selio has got to be shaking his head. He, he ended up uh, being classified 15th unofficially, and uh, no points for him today after finishing second in the opening round. So that uh, hurts his championship point race. And then uh, Ben Jelf dropping out early. Peter Morant. He qualified the best he had ever done today. He qualified second. A lot of people thought this is CTIC Xinjiang China's day. We're here in their home backyard. This is going to be the race where the breakthrough comes through. It'll be the first time he'll come up with a win. And he did not get even close to the finish line. He only put in seven laps. So obviously he's bitterly disappointed. But, uh, you know, and that's, that's a racing. Shame. Yeah, Steve, and that's a shame because he was in that third slot. And he was... He was running a solid race right the way through until uh, obviously he had some kind of technical problem. So as they uh, tank the uh, Team Abu Dhabi boat of Sean Torrente around, let's take a look uh, if we can get the uh, team standings and find out exactly what's the latest and greatest here. Again, unofficially, of course, to see what's happened after the first two rounds of this 2023 championship. Team Abu Dhabi just barely squeaking in that first place position. They are back in number one. Sharjah team slides there into that number two spot, tied by the Stromoy team, who uh, picked up uh, uh, only a, a total of about five points today. And uh, Team Sweden with uh, Jonas Anderson winning, charging up to the 26 points. They're only a point out of uh, second place. And then the victory team and the CTIC China team with 16 points. Mad Croc with five, um, with the Gilman Racing in uh, Comparado with uh, four points in Atlantic and Maverick still chasing their first points of the season. But I'll tell you something, that team championship just shows you, Jonathan, there's four different teams or five different teams in the top five that are so close together you can put a blanket over them. And it's just showing you how things have gone so level. Everything's leveling out here. There's no dominating feature like we saw back in the, in the 90s. And uh, the 2000s when it was all about Scott Gilman and uh, Guido Capilani. All right, as Sean Torrente steps out of the boat, a bit exhausted on a warm day, let's go back and take a look at the highlights of this 38-lap quest around this race circuit here in Zhengzhou, China, in front of a packed crowd that we had this afternoon here in central China as we watch uh, Jonas Anderson and uh, the boat going around. <laughs> look at Eric Stark. He's worn out and... Uh, he, uh, again, started down in 12th and came home in the uh, fourth position. He's obviously building up confidence as the season goes on as you go in the drone camera with Jonas Anderson. Let's go and take a look at this race. He's 38 laps, and let's take a look at the highlights of today's event, round number two of this championship. As we got set to go from the start, a great jump by uh, Peter Moran. He went side by side with Jonas Anderson at the start, and you can see how fast on the outside Torrente in that four spot came charging up, and he motored past Sami Celio, who had a terrible start. And we go on board to get a chance to see uh, Bartek Marzawak back uh, in that 10th uh, place position at this one point right there. Peter Morant charged at Jonas Anderson, realized he was going to go too close to him and he backed off and he started splitting lanes and that really hurt him because Torrente sliding on the outside found some clear water and he came charging down on the outside with his teammate in tow right behind him, Rashid al Quimsi. and as they came out of the first two commitment buoys down the Start finish line for the first time. Look at the lead that Jonas Anderson had at the beginning. 15 boat lengths on Sean Torrente, who squeaked in front as Bartak Marzawak, our points leader, dropped out. Three laps into it, and then Peter Moran with a China team. All tears for the large audience here was cheering for China to do well today. And then Sami Celio, who is up uh, fighting in the top three or four, did not finish the afternoon, and Torrente did his best to stay with this man, Jonas Anderson, but Anderson found the groove and continued to move, and he tore away 
from Sean Torrente, building a lead up to about 17 and a half seconds. And uh, all but the uh, top five drivers get uh, lapped. And there you can see a ding dong battle between Eric Stark and uh, a very feisty Philip Roms and that uh, Mad Croc Gilman team side by side. Stark was having a real difficult time trying to get around the young Finn. As uh, we can see the uh, driver from Holland, Ferdinand Zanderberg, and slowly crawling his way up. And he moved himself up into a podium spot. So hats off to the man who finished second in Rookie of the Year awards last year. As you look at the three-time world champion doing everything he can. But it was Jonas Anderson who set the fast lap of the day with a 47.36. A mesmerizing speed as he came away with the victory, winning this race here in China. This was the 28th victory here on the People's Republic soil. And uh, Jonas Anderson, knowing he's right back in the groove, looking for another world championship after last year, feeling like he had one stolen away from him. But on a great, great day, Jonas Anderson, who yesterday in qualifying, didn't seem to have the speed that he was hoping for, but misfortune from Sami Celio, who they said uh, got in the way of Peter Moran's hard uh, uh, lap, and they docked him his lap. And then they did the same thing to Torrente, who had the pole position, but he lost his advantage when they said, the official said he impeded on Celio, so tit for tap. But the bottom line is Jonas Anderson, right spot, right uh, time, uh, came home with a victory. Yeah, and you can see how important it is, Steve, to get that pole position. <clears throat> and uh, much as he tried, and he tried everything, uh, Sean Torrente, we got him on shot there, um, he just couldn't seem to close that gap. But I question, with Sean today, normally he's got the pace to be incredibly fast out the front. But did he? I don't think he had the pace, really. Even if he'd have had that pole position today, do you think he would have sh held off Jonas Anderson with the, with the pace that he was running? Because he just seemed to be able to pull away from the rest of the field. Yeah, Jonas set up a, a, a definite cushion on where he felt comfortable with. Sean Torrente uh, with There's some of the drivers' championship points and find out exactly where we are at when it comes to uh, the championship after two rounds. And again, of course, it's always uh, unofficial. As we go to the podium, Jonathan, official side. And on the other side is where the uh, drivers are over on that side. So uh, the drivers making their way up to the podium. Yeah, and great to see Zandberg in there getting that third. I mean, during the Grand Prix, we were a little bit sort of uh, trying to work out exactly what was going on and looking at different battles. But uh, a big shout out to him for that position. Uh, great finish i mean that boy he's really on fire at the moment and uh, he had that unfortunate uh, accident in um, indonesia earlier this year when he was running very very strong and uh, he's obviously got everything back together now steve and uh, a solid uh, uh, podium position for him today he must be he and his family must be so happy with the performance he's put on yeah ferdinand last year had an accident in the race uh, in Sharjah, the last race there. Then he had another accident in the race of Indonesia, and people are starting to whisper, this kid can't figure out what it takes to get to the, the maximum point without extending over it, which you've known for so many years. You, you race for a good 25, 30 years. You know what it takes, and it takes a while to get into that, uh, that group. Realize you just need to get into the groove. You know you can win some. You as long as you're right, right up there at the sharp end, that's really what it's all about. And uh, but that comes with experience. And you can see now that Zandberg and he really is sort of he's a lot calmer than he used to be. And uh, and he is now becoming one of the top drivers that we have in Formula One. And as you see, the drivers uh, working their way out of the uh, paddock and they're going back to their tents to change and to relax. Uh, the podium behind us is uh, getting geared up and we're ready for a big celebration. There you see the flags from the multi-nations here in this complex, which is gorgeous. It's a big wraparound circular glass building that was built about four years ago and it is tremendously scenic. You walk around the building in the glass and uh, it's, it's breathtaking. This city, by the way, of Zhenzhou is uh, not old. It's, it is, every city in China is old, but I mean, it really took off in their 1990s with the economic uh, turn of China. And since that time, they've built a plethora of new buildings in this city. You can see people driving new cars. The city is very clean. 
And uh, it's very impressive, Jonathan. There, there's different personalities about Zhengzhou that uh, really uh, will stay with us. Yeah, it's a very, very modern city. I mean, the building, the infrastructure, the architecture and everything, I've got to say, is second to none, you know. And it seems there's an air about the city that it, there's a lot of wealth here. You know, you, you see people, you know, in really top-end cars, supercars, and so on and so forth. Loads of banks here, I've noticed that. Well, that's a, if the economy's strong, I mean, the banks are going to move in, aren't they? And it appears that uh, that is, uh, in, in fact, the case. All right, let's shift our attention as we wait for the podium celebration to kick off. Turning up, we raced in a place called Chalon Sosun for many, many years, and then uh, Macon just down the road picked up the mantle. Uh, we went there last year. We had a great event, and uh, super to see that we're back again this year. And uh, again, a top-class Formula One circuit uh, put together very, very well. And uh, Steve, I'm looking really forward to that event. Different circuit, as you pointed out earlier on. We haven't got this technical circuit where we've got lots and lots of turns. It's just wide open, top speeds, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how some of these top drivers tackle that type of circuit because it's very different to the first two that we've had this year. Absolutely, and uh, it's down and back. It's like the old school circuits that we had for many years in Formula One and uh, long straightaways, narrow corners, and uh, it's about speed, but it's also about uh, judicious passing and patience working your way around back markers because they uh, will play a factor in this race coming up in France and anybody who can get through the back markers better than the guy uh, next to him is going to win the race. Yeah, and the other thing is when you're running on those long circuits, we have what we call tram lines, at least that's what we call it in boat racing, where the wash actually goes out, hits the bank and then comes back into the circuit. So it's, re it's a bit like driving a Formula One car across a ploughed field. It's a tough order. All right, there he is, the young driver from Holland. As Ferdinand Zandbergen steps up, takes the number three position today. He's got to be elated again. He's back on the push as Jonas Anderson, the driver from Sweden, who uses his family and his friends up in the, the woods of Sweden to help him and put together his race team that seems to really work and gel. He's got a whole community involved and uh, it seems to work so well. His wife, Janie, is there with him side by side. She's not afraid to jump in and hook trailers up and move boats around. And uh, she's right in the mix. And she's talking to her husband the whole time saying, giddy up. And that's exactly what he did. He giddied up and goad today, my friend. I like it. Yeah, because she's on the radio to uh, Jonas for the entire Grand Prix. So she knows a lot about strategy. She knows a lot about conditions on the water. Uh, his fellow competitors you know where they are in relation to where he is and she reads everything very very well and feeds that into information from Lavinia Cavallero who's the vice president of H2O Racing and uh, boy I'll tell you something Lavinia's husband for many years what a tremendous motorcycle racer he was yeah. He's oh got, yeah he yes. got trophies full in the garage and she worked with him for many years she's been around racing all over the world and she's a tremendous asset to this whole U.S. Formula One H2O World Championship brand. So where are we on the points now, Steve, uh, as far as the championship is concerned? Well, unofficially, Jonas Anderson, uh, you, I'm, I'm, I wasn't a math major, but right now he's, uh, I figure he's got 23. And because uh, he picked up three points in the first race and uh, by finishing eighth place, and uh, right now he's got 23. And Sean Torrente, who had only uh, two points for finishing in the ninth spot, has 15 more. So he's got 17. So uh, he's not in the second place because uh, Bartek Marzwak, who dropped out today, won the race in Indonesia. And you get 20 points for the victory. So Bartek's right there. So the, the top five is still very close. And, but Jonas Anderson has uh, moved himself right up toward the front. Yeah, you can see very much a family concern there with Jonas and his wife.